Hey guys, so when I made Animation vs. YouTube, I had to work with video quite a lot, as you can imagine. There are many things about working with video that I had to figure out the hard way, and so in this video I'm going to share all the things that I learned to you, so you don't have to figure them out yourself. First of all, why would you ever want to work with video in Flash? There are a few applications, including rotoscoping, which involves tracing over video to improve accuracy of animation. You can also draw over video to make special effects or just draw whatever you want over a video to do something experimental. You can also use video to have something play on a screen or TV in your animation. Finally, you can use video to make something similar to animation versus YouTube. Second, what are the limitations to working with video in Flash? Well, there are a lot of limitations, since Flash wasn't designed as a video editor like Premiere or Final Cut are. First of all, the videos must be in FLV format in order to use them in your animation. And although you can import the more common formats like MP4 or MOV, those videos won't be shown when you export it out. Second, you can't edit the video as easy as you can in Premiere. What I mean by that is you can't cut the video at a certain spot or edit it down like you do in other video editing softwares. At least at first glance it looks impossible, but I have a workaround that I'll share soon. So how do you add a video to your project? If you go to File, Import, Import Video, this window should pop up. These are your three options, load external video with playback component. This would be for if you're making an interactive flash game or document and you want to let the user play and pause the video on their own. We don't want that. We want embed FLV in Swift and play in timeline. The third option is embed H.264 video in timeline. This means you would be able to add an MP4 or MOV file, but you wouldn't be able to see it once you export it. However, this option is fine for rotoscoping if the video is only being used for reference. If your video is already in FLV format, you can skip ahead, but if not, there are a few options to convert your file to FLV. For animation versus YouTube, I used a great free program called FreeMake Video Converter, but towards the end of the project, the FreeMake company updated the program so that the videos would have branding on them unless you pay to remove them. So I had to pay. If they didn't add that, then they would be my number one recommendation because the program is so customizable and easy to use and versatile. But if you don't want to pay money to remove the branding, there are other free options like OnlineConvert.com and Convertio.co, which will take your uploaded file, convert it, and send it back to you. So once your FLV file is selected here, click Next. Make sure that Embedded Video is selected. The three options below it are up to you. If you have a lot of stuff in your timeline already, I would uncheck the top two. And obviously if you want audio to be included, then click Include Audio. I'm going to leave them all checked. Click Next, and then click Finish. Now you have an embedded video in your timeline. You can scale, rotate, and skew this video however you like. You can create a new layer and draw over the top of the video. But the larger and longer that the video is, the more laggy flash will become. So if this is the case, I recommend rotoscoping reference points on another layer, which means you draw outlines of the parts of the video that your animation will interact with. This way you can hide the video layer but still know what's going on in the video so you can do whatever animation you need to do without suffering from lag. Note that if you create a new keyframe on the video layer, the video will start over from that keyframe. So if you actually want to animate the position of the video, or start and stop the video, then what you have to do is create a new symbol, call it the name of the video, make it a graphic symbol, go to your library, and drag the embedded video in. When you nest the video inside a graphic symbol, this allows you to manipulate the video much more easily. So now when we go back to the main timeline, we can drag the new symbol in, and if we go to properties, we can choose what frame of the video to start on, and we can choose to play it, loop it, or have it set to single frame if we ever wanted the video to pause. We can now animate the video because when we create a new keyframe, it doesn't start the video over from frame one. We can even go into the symbol and create a mask for it if we wanted the video to be a different shape. I did this in Animation vs. YouTube when the orange stick figure beats up the video player to pieces. One last thing that you may not care so much about but was extremely important for me was to have smoothing turned on for the videos. When you zoom into an embedded video, by default smoothing is turned off, so the pixels are very sharp. When you're doing a slow zoom in, the lack of smoothing is very obvious because you see the pixels kind of jump. Unfortunately, there's no way to turn on smoothing in the settings of the video like there is when you go into the settings for bitmaps. But my friend Charles Ye gave me a very simple workaround. First you click the embedded video. Don't click the symbol that it's nested in, click on the embedded video itself. Go to the properties, then give it a name. 
It can be pretty much anything, although I don't think spaces should be included. Then go to the frame that the video is on, on the main timeline, not inside the nested symbol, click the frame, and then go to Actions by clicking here or going to Window Actions or hitting F9. Then type the name that you just gave it, add dot smoothing equals true semicolon. And now it will be smooth. It's complicated, but at the same time it's very simple. But it would be nice for Adobe to add a smoothing option in the properties of the embedded video. Anyway, that's all I've got for working with embedded videos in Flash. Let me know what you want me to cover next. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next video.